<laughs> what, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> fucking about making fun show. of him. So what else is show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bitches <laughs> on my lap. No fucking shit. That's your lifestyle. I'm not wrong. I'm just speaking truth. <laughs> What's up, guys? How we doing today? 167. Do the intro first today, not? Boys, ladies, gentlemen, anybody who's listening, dogs, cats. Episode 167 in the pit. We got Big Mike back today. Woo! You can see him over there. I don't know what camera's where, but <laughs> no camera. Let's no get camera. Show started. We got Big Nick tuning in. Hopefully, from Arizona. Episode 167, let's go. Let's go. All right, we do have an uh, insider video of Big Nick in Arizona in the Grand Canyon. Lumbling team, Big Nick's at the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, what's going on, buddy? Get the echo. <laughs> Lumbling team. Big Nick's at the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, what's going on, buddy? Get the echo. <laughs> Lumbling team. Big Nick's at the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Hey, buddy. What's going on? He's screaming, what's going on, buddy, into the, into the canyon. Hilarious. All right. Big Nick is in Arizona living his best life. He was, do you have the video of the fans, too? He's meeting fans. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. He said he got stopped like twice or maybe three times already. Yeah. Yeah. Living his best life. You live in Arizona and see Big Nick. Pay him a visit. Say hi. Word. All right. A dollar? Hilarious. All right. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. This is crazy, Johnny. Were you shocked by this? The MLT, MLB TV? Yeah. I mean, the highest in 20 years? So, MLB TV announced, yeah. So the most watched 18 day period in its 20 season history, including the seven most watched days ever. Fans have already watched over 1.34 billion minutes of live yeah. games. I think Pete, just because of COVID last season? Uh, I mean, there's so is a season, but. I think it's got to do with the cable packages. So, I wonder. So, the, the thing is, I don't know. If TV as well. Well, I don't, I don't have it, but I have someone else's account. Yeah. Um, so, MLB TV. Um, yeah, I mean, I love MLB TV. I use it all the time. Mm. But um, they are, uh, they have blackout restrictions. Mm. Oh, so this is good news. This is objectively like good news for baseball that people are watching more. I guess it's because pandemic baseball, no one watched last year. People are more interested in it this year. It's been a good season so far. It's been an exciting season. Um, but. You know, with blackout restrictions, like, I can't watch a Sox game. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't, um, you know, do – I when I'm home, I can't watch Nats games. Mm -hmm. NBA um, League passes like that, too. Yeah, it's stupid. The blackout restrictions are the dumbest thing. It's, it just hurts the sport more than anything. And the blackout restrictions are new? or No, no they've always been there. For a while. Then why is that just affecting it now? It's like, not affecting it now. It just, it just you, you wonder how much better they could do if they, had black, if they got rid of blackout restrictions. How much is it? Uh, it's 120 a year, I think. That's why I have it. So, else. if you lived in Philadelphia, you couldn't watch the Phillies? Nope. No. Oh, can you move your mic closer to yourself? Yeah. If you lived in Philadelphia, you couldn't watch the Phillies? No. That's all? Scoot over. Yeah. Right. Get over there. Stay in front of the mic. What's what? Do you have to dip your mouth in the There we go. That's the on button. <laughs> all right, we're good. Our mics weren't on. <laughs> Our mistake. My mic's on, guys. I'm gonna... So, it's $128 a year. Yeah, you can't even watch your local team. So what's the point? I, mean, I like. Well, I mean, I live here, so it's good for me. Um, but like, if you look at the map for blackout restrictions, um, it's kind of insane. If you live in the middle of like Iowa, like here, there's, there's some. Yeah, if you live in Iowa, you can't watch games from. Let's see. You can't watch. Let's go to Greenville. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. There's like four. You can't watch if you live in Iowa. We live nowhere close to any baseball teams. You can't watch games from either Chicago team. You can't watch St. Louis games. What? And you can't watch uh, Brewers games. And whoever really? so if they're playing other teams, let's say you're a Yankees fan and the White Sox play the Yankees, and you can't watch the Yankees games. 
And if you live in New England, you mm. generally can't watch it. You can't watch, yeah, you can't watch any Boston <coughs> games. If you were, the, the rule is if you are in the streaming market for the team, then you can't watch your games. What so, about like LA and West San Diego games and vice versa? That's a good question. Yeah, stateside, statewide. Yeah. So, like, if you live in Oakland, can you watch? Yes. It's okay. If you're outside the streaming market, then you can watch. It just sounds, wait, can you turn it up a little bit? We're a little soft, apparently. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. I think it would be good for you not to Philly games since you're around here. Yeah. If yeah. you live in the area. Like when you go home, but I feel like you the majority of people live in the state that they watch. You know? Yeah. No. Like, my brother doesn't have a cable package. It's a way to incentivize. So, baseball's financial structure is live and dies on the ca in the cable package, yeah, on yeah. on the uh, on who who's paying for cable, because that's what's led to the boon of, of financials right now in baseball, is the fact that um, you know, uh, I'm a little distracted, um, is the fact that you know, the reason why salaries have gone up is because teams are more valuable because of these cable deals. Teams are signing multi-billion-dollar deals with cable providers. And MLB wants to do all that it can to protect that. So they want to incentivize people to keep signing up for cable packages in order to keep profiting off of it. And so they, it's not in MLB's best interest to have more fans be able to watch the games. It's in MLB's best interest to force fans to pay, buy cable packages. Um, so that's the issue at hand. Um, make sure you're cutting from camera to camera. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. There's a lot of things going on right now. Um, Nesson can't work out a deal with YouTube TV. Nope. And so can't no one can watch, watch the, games. Can't watch the Red Sox games. Yeah. So it's uh, ridiculous. It's not great. Mm -hmm. It's not great. Baseball. I mean, it's so not. What's, it, what's the whole point baseball? of this? The whole they're point. Ju they're just trying to get. They're trying to incentivize people to make sure they're buying cable packages. Got it. So, so it's that, all subscription based. Yes. Because that's where the money comes in for MLB. Mm. And yet they're not taking care of their loyal fans. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the MO of baseball in, in general right now. You know, all these rule changes that they make to speed up the game isn't for the fans. It's for the, the ancillary fans, the fans who they want to attract. They, they, baseball understands that they have this core group of fans mm. that will, will go and die with the league, and they don't give a shit about those fans because those fans, as I said, will go and die with the league. They're attracting the ancillary fans or the fans that they can think they, they can profit the most. Prices have ri risen in the past years. While why new stadiums that are being built focus solely on luxury seats versus you know sight lines for the, 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 the nosebleed seats. You know if you look at the modern stadium structure, the whole second deck of the stadium are now luxury seats as opposed to if you look at like an older stadium like PNC or I think an older stadium. You can look at Fenway where they have very few box <coughs> seats. The fan experience is, you know, you want to be as close to the field as possible. They're not catering to the fans anymore. They're catering to a very select group of fans. And, th I mean, that's the whole problem with MLB and the whole, you know, lots of sports. And the Super League, too. Mm. You know, this is relevant right now with soccer. You know, this is unbelievable. Yeah, the Super League. I mean, I've read more about this. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, people don't go to a game. Well, I, I shouldn't say people won't. But I'd say... Uh, there's a good percentage of people who go to games now not to watch the game, but to just get the experience. Yeah. And how many times a year do you see a fan getting hit in the face with a foul ball that are texting or on their phone or something like that? I mean, fans always get hit with foul balls. Right, but I'm saying, like, it's, it's more about the experience rather than actually watching the game these days. I'd say that's always been true of baseball. I think people what, – what was great about baseball, what's always been great about baseball, is that there are 82 games a year at home stadiums – and that there's you know always a game on generally every day and every night, and so you'll have fans you know who can come to a game, and I, you know, I was listening to this podcast a while back uh -huh. about about Wrigley and about how they really built this young fan base at Wrigley, and one of the ways they did it is they gave kids free tickets all summer long. So if you're if you're a young kid and you live in the Chicago area, you could get and you're under like a certain age, I think it was like ten or something, you could get free tickets to go to a game. And I think that's genius because that makes takes a burden off the family. That takes a burden off the kids who want to go to see a baseball game. And back then, I mean, kids used to just leave house, leave their house, go take the subway, and be at the games, you know, with no issue. Now it's a little different with you know safety, but um, like that's how you build fan base. People have always want to go to games. Always, you know, baseball has always been a huge part of America in the last 130 years since it's been a thing. And People always love going to games, and you're pricing out certain groups of people now to have that experience, to have those, you know, people that yeah, go to the text, but, like, you know, college mm -hmm. kids, 
they do eight dollar tickets for college kids, but those go come and go so quickly. Uh, I'm not dropping 35, 40 bucks on a ticket if I'm a college kid. I don't have the money for that. So, like, you know, they're pricing out their fans, they're pricing out the people who want to go to the games, and it's all in the pursuit of more profits. So, interesting. Um, and if you're a Dodgers fan, too, it's even worse. Do you know about this deal with Dodgers fans? So, unless you're a, this, I don't know, I think this is still the case. Unless, so, Dodgers broad games are broadcasted through ATM, AT&T Spectrum, which is the, the local station. But it's also a, a cable provider. And so, unless you have Spectrum, you can't watch the games in L.A. And then you're also blacked out. So, in L.A., in the pursuit of greed and profits, because they made this big deal for exclusive rights to broadcast the games, if you're not a Spectrum member, you cannot watch L.A. Game, Dodger games in L.A. at all. Sounds about right. Damn. Yeah. L.A. trying to make profit? No. Never yeah. heard of it. So, never that's my, my, uh, my spiel about blackout restrictions and MLB TV. And, yeah, dude, they're doing great right now, but, you know, they could be doing a lot better. But why do you think this is, like, the best they've ever done? I don't know. I don't have an answer. Interesting. What do you think? I got nothing else. I think it's people, more people turn into streaming services yeah. than getting the cable packages. Okay. It could very well be that. Yeah. I mean, it could be – I mean, it's interesting because we've seen in all sports across the board – Ratings just going down since the pandemic. Last year, the NBA Finals were the lowest rating it had in over 20 years. Well, you could attest that to it being the matchup as well, but... I mean, you got the Lakers and Heat. That's a, two big markets. Yeah, no one cared about the Heat. Everyone knew the Lakers were going to win. I, I don't think... If it, you got two the whole teams playoffs. that, like, you don't know who's going to win, then, like, it's different. But, like, everyone knew the Heat were going to lose that series. I mean, yeah. let's yeah. just be honest. But, you know, you still have the Cavs-Warriors series... That did well. Stars, though. You got superstars I mean, all around. Got LeBron and AD. I mean, it has, it's pretty good. And Jimmy Butler and Bam and Bayou. People don't really talk about them as much. But I'm, I, saying, I think I'm, not, I'm not saying that that is the reason why, but I'm just saying like, that could have been a potential yeah, reason. I think the reason is that was basketball play in October. Um, so that's, that's. That also, yeah, yeah exactly. But like the Masters Scheduling. were down last year. I think the Super Bowl even ratings were down this year. So it just across the board, ratings are down in sports. So it's interesting to see baseball ratings being up. On MLB TV, I'm interested to see if maybe people are just happy sports are coming back and just I don't know more yeah. eyes to the sport. Maybe, maybe this is just a fraudulent article. Yeah, maybe it's they're all just a lie. lying. Maybe <laughs> they're just sports nuts, <laughs> conspiracy, hmm. lying about their ratings. Interesting. All right, you hear about this? Nike ended their deal with Kobe Bryant. Yeah, Mario no, was they up. didn't end it. What was up? Kobe's wife. Kobe's yeah, wife didn't expired. re-up it. She Kobe's wanted a lifetime deal, it. and they yeah. didn't want to give him. No, she wanted a lifetime deal, and well, they didn't want to give lifetime? him a lifetime deal. You're a dick. <laughs> I'm just like, saying. No, like, like, I'm not, it's an honest like question. The, well, for his estate, a for lifetime his, deal for his estate. But how does that work? Until his wife mean, dies, I'm assuming, or his like, kids. Like when die? you say lifetime deal yeah. for a guy who's dead, he's dead. Well, I'm, I mean, well, I'm, okay. Well, I'm I'm telling you that she said we wanted a lifetime deal, and they said no, so we're not doing it. That's maybe maybe her lifetime. I'm assuming for as long as her and her kids. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't. I mean, you can't argue with her for trying to get through. I mean, l- the way she that. put out the thing saying like, whenever a Kobe product gets put out, it sells out in seconds. Yeah. Like they want to be. She's not doing it maliciously. She's just doing it out of yeah. That's good. Yeah. For for it business. Is. Yeah. And if they don't come to a deal, which there is potential that they still do, I think that they're just going to go in their own direction and start, you know, their putting out brand. their own products and vice and all that stuff. Because anything they put out with Kobe's name on it is going to sell out in seconds still especially to this now. day, especially, especially now. now, yeah. So. Mamba. Yeah. I mean, this is what Nike had to say about it. This, they said, quote, Kobe Bryant was an important part of Nike's deep connection to the consumers. He pushed us and made everyone around him better. Though our contractual relationship has ended, he remains a deeply loved member of the Nike family. How nice. Respect. How nice. How nice. I mean, I, who are – LeBron, they said LeBron and someone else has a lifetime deal. I forget who the other person was. Is it Ronaldo? Those are the only two people that have lifetime deals with Nike. So, obviously, they don't like giving them out. I mean, Kobe's the guy. But, I mean, Kobe's the guy that you'd give that to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised they don't want to. Yeah, I'm surprised too. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it it would. Favorite basketball sneaker of all time. It's probably the most worn basketball shoe. The in the NBA today, or no? I'm just saying Kobe's yeah. in general. Like every NBA, like so many NBA players wear Kobe's more than any other shoe. Um, 
I mean, if it's a money issue, like sure, but like think of how much money they'd they'd bring in from selling all these different products, like Johnny said, like especially now. You think they can't afford it? No, 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 no. no. I'm saying they like they don't want to pay however much you know the lifetime deal would be. Uh, but I'm saying on the other hand, like they would make some they money. can make a shit ton of money. Like yeah. it would pay itself off, but. Yeah. I don't know. I'm obviously not involved in that, so who knows what the numbers were. Yeah. Interesting. All right. We got some, I know Nick's not here. This would be a perfect topic for Nick, but Joe Exotic, do you guys hear about oh this? Gosh. No. What else? <laughs> There's going to be a Joe Exotic TV show. A what? It's a, a limited series. Yeah. They announced it, so they made these plans like a year ago when like Tiger King was a huge thing, and now they're still going ahead with it. So Kate McKinnon from SNL oh. is going to play Carol Baskin. Oh, God. <laughs> and then, yeah, John Cameron Mitchell to play Joe Exotic. How many episodes is this? It looks like him. Miniseries. I don't know. It's like six uh. by eight. I don't know. I mean, who asked Is it as a spoof? Is it like a No, it's make... like the OJ versus the people thing. So it's going to be a yeah. real thing. It's yeah. not like, oh, my God. It's like a TV. Yeah, TV. Like a Stop, I mean, didn't they make a documentary about this? Why do we need a show about Stop this? Stop making too? it yeah. relevant. I don't know why people yeah. keep talking about this shit. Documentary still is going to be better than this, but. Uh, I don't know. Are you going to watch it? No. No? no? Absolutely no. The people can't yeah. get enough Carol Baskin. I mean, I think if this was 2020, then, yeah, people can't get enough Carol Baskin. I people watched it because kind of there was craze, nothing else yeah, to watch. The Tiger King craze is kind of dead I'll now. I'll tell you They're what. trying to bring if, it back. If that came out now <laughs> and not last year, I probably wouldn't have watched Tiger yeah, King. Like, it I would not watch it right now it if it came out. Perfect I only watched it because it was nothing else. Exactly. <laughs> It was not Everyone really was good. talking about yeah. it. I was like, okay, I'll it watch it. It was good timing. Like, it was. It, was. it really was. Just so. like the Last Dance, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Last Dance. Oh, by the way, one year anniversary of The Last Dance airing the first episode. Today? Yep. Yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. kind of weird to think about. That's been a year since that came out. That's crazy. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah I saw them finish it. Spoiler either. alert. They win in 70, 97. No. I hate to break it to you. What? They, they beat the Jazz. No. Yeah. Stockton and Malone? Twice. Fuck no. You're lying. Yeah. No way. They do it. They pull it off. They Bonkers. do it. Bonkers. Well, no. Are you guys going to watch the Tiger King? No. <laughs> I still haven't finished the original. Time, yeah. Haven't even finished haven't even the original? I haven't started the original. Really? Yeah, there's no point. You don't got it. No, wow. no point. It, Honestly, the original is unbelievable. Yeah, the original it's is the sick. Can't argue that. It's yeah. fine at best. Like, I sick. feel like we don't have the same TV It's so show. cool. It's entertainment. I mean, Joe Exotic's taking the, the food off the Walmart it's truck. It's wild. That's and sh- selling it I still have yet to start pizza. Game of Thrones. It, it is a great <laughs> documentary. It's inspired food. It's unbelievable. One of my favorite. Unbelievable. One of my favorite the guy scenes spent, like, the show was he, when the guy, that other guy was on the jet ski when he was on the water, and they did the slow motion music. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was, like, the greatest yeah. 30 seconds of that show. How I was like, this is, t- this is great TV right yeah. now. Yeah. Eight, eight or ten, ten or something like that. How long are each episode? Like an, an hour, hour maybe? 45 an hour. It's not, it's not worth your time. It's, it's great. Not, you don't have to worry about it's it. Not worth you, you really you don't. You the craze. It's not worth it. Look time. up highlights on YouTube if I you want. It's unbelievable. What's worth it? That or Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones Oh, well. Well, well, Game of Thrones. You're talking about I mean, two different things. You're talking about a documentary. And you're talking about I haven't seen Game of Thrones. I have. I, I really want to watch yeah, Game of Thrones. Fiction, oh, I'm, watch I'm, Game of I'm out. Oh, dude. It's Wait, just. So has I, anyone here seen Game of Thrones at this table? Yeah, I'm out on I, can, I never really got into it. I, re- I want to get into it. Never I've just seen never it. seen it. You guys are all crazy. I'm not I a big. I, I I'm it. so afraid of getting to season eight because I've just heard so many terrible things yeah, about it. I heard it because of expectations. That's why. Yeah. If the expectations were through the roof, it would be. This is my, I've never seen it, so I could be wrong, but this is my theory. So, for the first seven seasons, no, I feel like this is a legit theory, though. Never, no, I've never, never seen no, one so episode. What te- this is my theory. No, so with TV it. shows like this, like people, like um, like the fantasy type of like storyline, like people build these storylines in their head, like of what they want to happen and what they think is going to happen, and when that doesn't happen, they get pissed off. So season eight, they thought a completely well, different thing was going to happen. I don't know what that thing would be. So when it didn't happen, <laughs> they were pissed off. What? No, what happened? Right. Am I not? Right? Am I right? Or am I, I wrong? I wrote my own season with just the theories that I had. Before. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, I, everyone no, has think, their own theories. So when that didn't happen, they were just like, "Fuck!" Like, what is well, this bullshit? No, what happened was they ran out of book, and so they had, the writers actually had to write their own storylines, and those writers weren't very good at writing storylines, mm-hmm. and so they're they're out of George R. R. Martin's books because he didn't write a new one. And so they kind of just made up their own storylines that were very unsatisfying for a lot of people. They were teasing. They put out a tweet the other day saying winter is coming. Yeah. People were conspiracizing that they were going to remake season eight or do season not, nine. No. They're Starbucks gonna, I mean, they have cup new, on the set. Yeah, they have new shows coming out. They have a bunch of new oh, shows. Oh, really? Yeah. But Dante, you haven't seen any of it? No one here has seen Game of Thrones. 
Nope. No, I want to. I want to. But so I what just are you talking about, Dante? <laughs> what do you mean? What I, I never will. What do you mean? Just based off stuff you like read about. No, I'm just saying like with any show, no with no. any show, you can have Harry this storyline in your head of what you want to happen. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, you'll be upset about it. So that's why I think happened with Game of Thrones. Because people thought the show was going in one direction, yeah. but it went in another, and people weren't happy that it went in that direction. Uh, okay. I don't know what those directions were, but that's why I think happened. Okay. Because so you can say that for a lot of TV shows. So that's that what you heard about. What would you guys yeah. say is your favorite TV show? Prison Break. Prison Break. Ooh, that's a good one. Of all time. That's a great one, Will. That's, that's, a, that's a good show. I wouldn't say that's my favorite. That's a good show. The League, the League of oh. God. Um, the Office. Good pick. Great pick. Um, I mean, so I'm gonna say pick? like Breaking Bad. I was Breaking Bad was yeah. on top. I'd say Breaking Bad or Dexter. The and first four seasons of Dexter. The first four seasons of Dexter. Oh, first, Dexter. the first four seasons of Dexter are locked in, but like an entire series, I'd probably go Breaking Bad. Yeah. I think it's overrated. Season four. One of the best seasons yeah. of any TV show I've ever seen, and after that, they just. I mean, Seinfeld's <laughs> got to get some picks here. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, th among this tape, among this crew. I'm going. I'm going Seinfeld and Breaking Bad. I'm going the 30 Rock and Breaking Bad slash Better Call Saul. I, I, I'm still like split between Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, which is my favorite. Big Mike's an always sunny guy. Oh, great show. Great show. <laughs> great show. Great <laughs> show. We're passionate fans. All day yesterday. I love that goddamn show. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I probably choose 30 Rock. I love 30 Rock. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. All right, we got the NFL draft coming up. Yes, Next sir. Thursday, and the Rams, they might have the nicest draft war room out there. You guys see this shit? They have the nice what? Their new stadium. Room. It's in a mansion. Oh! It's in Malibu. Yeah. What? Oh! They rented yeah. out a mansion in Malibu for their draft. Why? That's high. Vibes. They don't Good even vibes. They don't even have a first round Good pick. Vibes. They don't so have a first round pick. I'm curious to see what yeah. other teams. <laughs> wow. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> What's our budget? Can't, <laughs> can't every other franchise use? half a mil. What? Rent out a place in Malibu? What? They don't live in LA. It's not like in person, so why not just rent out a dope ass house and keep the shit normal? Yeah. Uh, but I don't like That's most. They mostly just do it at their stadium. Shit ton of money. Cliff Kingsbury's house. Yeah, most. I mean, last year they were all at home. This year, they're. I mean, most teams just go to their stadium. They have like a war room. I mean, yeah. doesn't you don't need a nice place. I mean, yeah. you're drafting. You're you're doing your job. So they're just overdoing it. Yeah, definitely. They don't even first round pick. They're just gonna be chilling there. Hey. It's just an excuse for the. Hey, that's a good to place to chill. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd chill. I'll chill there. I mean, listen. Yeah. If I am, <laughs> if I am Sean McVay, I am ecstatic about this. I, mean, I get to chill, put my feet up. You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking Belichick's dining room with on Nantucket dog. with the dog. Yeah, with the dog. <laughs> Nike. Nice and simple. Go on nice a trip and on simple. the boat over to Nantucket. Don't mind if I do. Have you guys seen Bill Belichick's boat? Yeah. That's sick. His what? <laughs> He'd be stupid yeah. if he did it. I mean, again, they don't have a first round pick. The first night, they're just chilling. Jared, uh, no, oh my God. If that, 33, well, 34, something like that. 35. 35? Just turned 35. Young as fuck. Yeah. How old is uh, Cliff Kingsbury? Also pretty young. Yeah, he's younger than that, I think, right? 70. No. 70. What? He's 41. So oh, never mind. I thought he was younger than God, that. I, yeah, I, think I thought he was, he was like 10 years younger than that. Nope. Huh. All right. Yeah, uh, that's silly. Seems silly to me. Whatever. Good vibes. <laughs> so one of the comments says, "Will you look like Jared Walsh, the first baseman for the uh, Diamond a Angels?" I'll pull up a photo. All right. I would like to see what this guy looks like. That guy's ass. <laughs> it's more. I see more. You gotta grow out. the beard out, Will. You gotta get that see thing popping. I'm dead. I mean, this guy. <laughs> I love Jared Walsh. He's awesome. He's a two-way player. I used to be a two-way player. That's kind of close. That That's kind of close. close. <laughs> Put the glasses on. Eh, more Kevin Love yeah, than this guy. He's more Kevin Love. I can see the facial hair, especially. I see it more. That's hilarious. <laughs> gotta grow it back out. All right, uh, Dante. You hear about this? The number one. High school recruit is going to Gonzaga. Yeah, he was high school teammates with uh, Jalen Suggs really? at Gonzaga, but he already committed to the NBA, so wow. they're not going to play. No. Seven feet, 165 pounds. No way. Yeah, yeah. this he's, dude's a baller. He's insane. This Chet dude Holmgren. is a. 
Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he is a stick. Yeah, yeah they'll bulk him He up. was at Steph Curry's camp yeah, a few times or something team. like that. Yeah. So yeah, he and yeah he and Sucks played at um, in Minnesota together. Yeah. Same school. I mean, yeah, I, I watched a little bit of his highlights because for some reason this guy on TikTok who posts a lot of Minnesota State uh, basketball highlights. So I've seen some Chet Holmgren highlights. Oh. He's sick. I mean, he'll be. He could, he's projected. He's number one for a reason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's he's projected to be the number one pick in the next year's draft right now. Wow. It's early. Yeah. Anything can change. But is anyone else leaving Gonzaga, Kevin? Do you know? Other than Suggs? Was there anyone else that was like going, thought about going to the draft? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, Gonzaga running it back next year. Yep. Try to win again. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, well, they got this kid, so I mean, they'll be all right. Do you think Gonzaga's still going to be the favorite for next year? One of the favorites, not yes. the favorite. One of them, though. I mean, they lost one game last year in the finals. I mean, they got to be the favorite. They had the odds out already very, very early. Really? Yeah. I mean, they got – I mean, you get the best recruit in the country on the best team that already was the best team in the country. It's hard to get much better. Big comeback season for Duke. Leroy. Duke. Revenge tour. Revenge, Revenge yeah. tour. Alex Smith. Johnny's pissed. See ya. I, I just got retired. Came back, wow. got his hardware, hanging him up. Yep. Johnny's here. Came back, player of the year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, great story. I mean, I mean, you, yeah, I just are don't you actually mad? No. No. I just don't care. Okay. He wasn't gonna go back to Washington. He wasn't coming back to DC. He hated it here. Yeah. Yeah. Are you mad? <laughs> what? Are you mad? Yeah, you, you seem no, a little flustered. That's what I heard. Now, that's case. what. Um, what's his name? Yeah, Dave said that. Dave was I, that I was Johnny not mad. Cheated. I was saying if you shoot where you're shooting. Dave was you, saying that Johnny was running around the apartment freaking out. <laughs> I wasn't even there. What? It was, just, it was in the afternoon. I wasn't even there. <laughs> it was in the afternoon I wasn't even yesterday. there, Mom. Yeah, hey, were you here? <laughs> yeah, I was here. Yeah, what's Dave talking that? about? I don't know what Dave's talking about. Why does people He's making up know? lies. Yeah. What I said That's your roommate that, right there. This is what, what I said was that if you're going to shit on the organization that gave you a shot, then yeah, yeah, you might not get another job. Yeah. That's all I said. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he would have gotten a job. Apparently, he almost signed with Jacksonville as their backup. Yeah, I saw really that. Mentor Trevor Lawrence, they decided not to. Uh, I mean, he would have reunited with his old coach at Utah, yeah. Urban Meyer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, who do they have as backup? Right now? Yeah. Oh, Minshew is still Gardner. there. Yeah, yeah he's still there. They still have him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nut. He's their quarterback. Minshew, um, quarterback I fuck with Gardner Minshew. At Washington? What? No, no Washington. No, no, no. Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I well, love you guys Gardner have? Minshew. Oh, wait. We're talking Alex he's, Smith was going to back up Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville, but he but retired. Mm-hmm. Gardner Minshew's the backup in yeah. Jacksonville. I fucking love Gardner Minshew. I don't know Minshew. why I thought so Alex Smith was on the football team. He was. We were saying that he was offered a job in Jacksonville. Okay. Potentially. He turned it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, did he turn it down? Who's the football yeah. team have for quarterback here? We got Fitzmagic, baby. Ooh. And Heineke. And Heineke. Like, and look at this man. Like, come on. This is Gardner Minshew. Are you kidding Whoa. me? The yeah, mullet uh, game, chest hair. Kyle Allen, Come too. On. But I think we're going to draft That's a, a man. I'm going to be in for Halloween this year. I think we're going to – because, like, all these are I'll one-year options. Mustache. No one's, like, a mm-hmm. long-term plan. Yeah. And so I think if Mac Jones – if we can get Mac Jones, I think Mac Jones will come. We'll get what him. pick? We have the 19th pick, but I can see us trading up with the ninth. Who would you want? There's going to be a lot of movement. Draft, ideally. Ideally? I mean, I'd love us to get a safety. Yeah. Or someone just to bolster the defense because the defense is already a pro. And if you can get something to even double down on your pro <coughs> – then like you have a nasty defense yeah. next year. Like right now, I mean, right now the offense is preset. Mm-hmm. We've got McLaren. We've got um, um, is Corey Davis. No, he went to the Jets. Yeah, not Corey Davis. Uh, who went there? Yeah. Nineteenth pick. There's gonna be a lot of movement in the next. Well, won't be there, no, no, probably not. He'll go top. Fi- he yeah. shouldn't go past fifteen. I mean, uh, who do we sign? Um, we signed the guy from the, the no, Panthers. Uh, oh, um, uh, Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel. Uh, we signed Curtis Samuel. I mean, we've got lo- we, our, our offense is set. We could get a quarterback. We don't really need a, a, a skill player. We could get a lineman. But yeah, I'd love us to double down on defense. And the drafts, eight days today. Nine, nine, days, nine, days, nine today, days, right? right? Next Thursday. I'm hyped. There's gonna be a. So from what I read was that the top three picks, team is gonna see who goes one, two, three. Obviously, it's gonna be Lawrence and then two other quarterbacks, assumably. And then they're going to see who goes because if, like, Land, uh, not who, no, why did I say, uh, Justin Fields doesn't go top three, there could be a lot of teams that want that four pick. 
So like no one is gonna no one's gonna do anything I think up until the draft because they're gonna see what happens mm-hmm. and then when that happens the Falcons could be like all right we're gonna take all these calls and while they're yeah. on the clock. I mean I think I'm sure teams are ready to like are pa- like getting their packages ready, um, but they're gonna wait to yeah. see what happens. Like they're the Patriots aren't gonna trade up if Mac Jones is at four. Like if if you got Lawrence Fields and Wilson go top three, the Patriots aren't gonna trade up to four to get Mac Jones. Like that's just not gonna happen. Yeah. But if you go Lawrence, Wilson, uh, Mac Jones, and Fields is at four, and the Falcons are like, we're going to trade it. Then I think the Patriots are going to be like, all right, we're going to make a big haul for this. Do you, you think, think they the take Fields? Yeah. Do you think the Niners are going to take Mac Jones? I think yeah. there's a good chance. I think there's I a, don't a, think so. a. They shouldn't. I, I think it would be idiotic if they did, but I have a feeling that they're considering him just as much as Fields, which they shouldn't. They no, absolutely should no, not. I mean, you don't make that trade to get a guy you probably could have gotten with your pick. That, and right? I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Like but Fields, like Fields is the guy who's probably going top four. Regardless. He should, and you should. And so if you're in the Niners, you see that, you're like, okay, we got to move in the top three. Mm-hmm. If you really want Fields. Yeah. But No, I'm just saying, they're yeah. giving him just as much attention as Fields, so it just makes you think. And I don't know, we've seen swerves before. You never know. At the last second, they could just be like, you know, we think Max our guy. Yeah, I mean, possibly. I think they'd be stupid if that happened. But. They'd be very stupid. Yeah. But, um. So if any of the quarterbacks, besides Wilson, besides um, Lawrence, which one would you want the Patriots to get? In fields? Yeah. I'm going think. Jones over Fields. Really? Yeah. Well, wh- all right. So, like, if we kept 15 or, like, in just in general? Like, no just picks or nothing? Yeah. Just in general. I think Fields is more of, like, an all-around. Like, his, his ability to much. run out of the pocket, like that 4-4. I think you have a lot to work with. <laughs> and plus, if you draft him and you don't start him right away, you have him learn playing underneath Cam for a year or so, I think you could really build him up into something, uh, to a beast. But Potentially. I think Mac Jones has potential too, but I, I don't know. Pure passer. You know a guy I like? I don't think Justin that, Fields is going to be a good pro. Yeah, I don't think – I'm, I'm not high on Justin Fields. No. First of all, I think I've just been scoring – been hurt by Ohio State quarterbacks. Uh, don't trust him anymore. <laughs> Uh, but and then Bama quarterbacks too. I mean, I, I've never really seen a Bama quarterback turn good in the pros. Jalen Hurts, baby, you wait. Uh, <laughs> two, uh, two. We'll yeah. see what happens with them. Uh, Tell me something else I don't know, Michael. But I like the, you know whose tools I really do like. Who I, I mean, he's very raw, but he could be something if you like put him in the right system mm-hmm. and let him develop right the right way. Is Trey Lance? Yeah, I've heard some stuff about yeah. him too. I feel like he's going to be one of those guys. You know, I feel like it's going to be like in um, in uh, the 2017 draft, was it, when Lamar went 30 yeah. second? Yeah, yeah. And, like, slipped. Josh Rosen went in the top ten. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was absurd. I feel like that's going to be the case with one of these well, quarterbacks. Well, that was Baker. Going. That was Baker, Darnold, yeah. Rosen. Yeah. Was there another quarterback in the top ten that year? Mm. Other than Jackson, or were those the four? Let's look it up. Because I know those three were top ten. 2018. So you got Trash. Baker, Darnold, Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Yeah, and Josh Allen that's who it was. I what, mean, what pick? Allen went seventh. So Baker went one, Darnold went three, Allen went seven, Rosen went ten, and then you got Lamar going 32nd. Wild. Now look at drafts. You got Sonny Calvin. Michelle went right before Lamar Jackson, too. Oh, sad. What the fuck? Good Mika pick. Patrick was in that draft, and this is a good draft class. I mean, outside the quarterback. Isaiah Wynn. Yeah, we got that. We got him at 23. DJ that was Moore. The yeah. Cooks trade. Calvin Ridley, 26. Yeah, this actually is a very good first round. Yeah. Hayden Hurst, pretty good. Tremaine Edmonds, too. Yeah. Not bad. But, uh, yeah, I feel like this draft can be very similar to that, where the quarterbacks that go, you know, one of the quarterbacks that slips to the, to the cracks is going to be the guy who's going to be talked about more there is another than, like, the three top guys. Like, I think Wilson's going to – I mean, Trevor Lawrence is obviously going to be a hit. I mean, I'm, nothing's obvious in football, but, I mean, there's never been a draft prospect like him in quarterback in a long time. And then you got Zach Wilson, who everyone's very high on. I mean, I've never watched a BYU football game, so I can't really comment on it. But then I feel like after that, it's just going to – the quality is going to drop off pretty quickly. Yep. There was this one quarterback that they were saying was going to slip in the Patriots. Uh, Kellen Mond, Mond yeah, I think. Yeah, A&M. Yeah, and then – it was one of the guy. Maybe, yeah, he was one of the guys I he was, was hearing Mon. about. Yeah, yeah Mon is like the the next tier. Yep. After Lance. Yeah. Where did he go to school? Texas A&M. 
yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm excited. I can't wait to watch the draft. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I, I think it's like you know, like you have an idea. Like the first two picks, it should be Lawrence and Wilson, and after that, it's just like, all right, let's wait and see what happens. It could be interesting. What picks do the Patriots have? Fifteen. They have ten picks in total. Their okay. first one's fifteen. Um, I think it's how many picks? Uh, compensation stuff like that. Uh, one of them, I mean, one of them's from the Gronk given Gronk to Tampa Bay. They got a second-round pick for that, or a third-round pick, I believe. Love that. Um, yeah, a lot of compensation picks. Great trade. Yeah, it worked out. I mean, hey, we'll take a second-round pick for a guy that was retired. Ooh. Won a ring, but, I mean, we get a second-round pick. So he wasn't playing for us. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Who do you think we're going to go for? That's the thing. So, like, I'm, it all depends on what happens at three. Trade down. If, it all depends what happens at three. I think that's what's going to dictate. They could trade down, or, if, like I said, if someone like Fields is available at four, mm -hmm. they could – put together like three of those picks maybe a few more in the years in the future yeah it's a trade up but i don't know i don't know what bill belichick's thinking uh, i could absolutely i could absolutely see them trading down too especially if they don't see anything middle there you get a few picks in return too you can get a quarter one of the, that quarterback in texas and i just said mm. you can just take him in the second or third round yeah and yeah. don't have to take mac jones at 15 for example you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. get something in return too you think your boy gets a shot this year, Casey Stidham? Starting quarterback, Jared <laughs> Stidham. I hope so. He, need, he just needs to start. Yeah, he yeah, needs. I'm sure. Yeah. He just needs an opportunity, dude. Oh, he has How got. He's gotten a few opportunities. Your hair and on your face from the <laughs> Did I get? Yes. Some on my hair. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And you got some on your mat and your. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> you remember that one day that he had that sticker Thank like you. right on his forehead yep. and Nick hilarious. Was just absolutely what did he lost. Do? He was <laughs> fucking lost it. What? That day that oh, you had yeah. that, uh, Nick absolutely just fucking lost all control. He was laughing so much. That was hilarious. <laughs> all right, are you guys big Vin Diesel fans? I love Vin Diesel. There you go. Who do you Diesel. think wanted to fight, The Rock or Diesel? Give me The Rock. The Rock. Question. Give me The Rock. The Rock. Uh, I don't know. Vin Diesel's pretty scrappy. Vin Diesel's, Vin Diesel's like five to five. Okay. Hey. <laughs> it's okay. It's <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's okay. The fight in the dog. It's not the size of the dog. <laughs> there we go. It's the size of the fight in the dog, baby. Yeah, Vin Diesel's six dog, foot. Hey. Not good. Don't talk about short arms. <laughs> it's like Vin, a T Rex. Vin Diesel's six feet. The Rock's like six four, so he's still got height on him. Yeah, he has, what? baby. Oh. And I'm six, five. six five. The Rock does have some experience fighting. Six. Not he's six feet? Mm hmm. What? The Rock's still got five inches on him, regardless. Heels. And heels. <laughs> Maybe in the pacifier they list him as six feet, yeah. but. Well, speaking of the pacifier, he's about to start a new movie, Rock'em, Sock'em, Robot. Okay. Good Good Thank you. <laughs> pacifier nice. to that. Didn't they already make that movie with uh, Hugh Jackman, the Real Steel movie? Did yeah, they? So. I'm pretty sure they did. Look it up. Okay. <laughs> Look it up. I gotta say, up. Vin Diesel's got some good uh, beats still. Yeah. That song, that what? EDM song oh, he put EDM out song. like less than a year ago. It's fire. It's actually fire. It's I, I wouldn't know from fire. <laughs> no, but it's just like, it's no, like but a, like for like Vin new? Diesel putting it out, like it's pretty. Yeah, I got it. I, it could have been a Dude, he's pretty good. Man. It could have been a lot worse. You got the Rock'em Sock'em uh, Challenge? I thought it was good. Big I think Mike, it was Big cool. Mike I think it's dope. Song. I, oh, he I listen to it all the time. <laughs> he has two of them? He has a new song. What? Have you heard his new song? No. Days Are Gone. This is his latest song. Oh, it's from also last year. We're getting taken down. Nah, I feel like I do better, I think. I'll play that first. I don't want to get. This, yeah, this one's. This one. He's like a DJ? No, yeah, it's dude. He, he DJs it's like and he sings. sings. He sings? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? Look at the picture. Like the fast the forward, fast forward. Wait till you, the beat drops. That's <laughs> so great. I'll listen to a full album. Has Yohan Moncada put in any uh, hits music? lately? Yeah. No, nothing lately. He plays <laughs> put your hands playing. up for Vin fucking Diesel. But yeah, that's that's Vin Diesel's music. I so love you're, it. We were saying there's another rock and sock and robot that was already made. So they made Real Steel. Or is it Real Steel? I think it's Real yeah. Steel. All I gotta Steel. say is, does The Rock put out music? He, when he was in WWE, he would do these um, live concerts where he'd sit in the ring with his acoustic guitar and like sing songs and stuff. It's true. I mean, like... So not technically he doesn't put out music, but Shaq makes music. DJ I'm Diesel. DJ <laughs> Diesel. That's what his name is. Kobe, how my ass taste. Big Mike Frozen Bomb Skull. 
How was my ass? I got Rose Rose today. Okay, see you later. <laughs> for it's, the, it's a bang. For the second. Um, Back over here, you know Rose is. Yes, it's wine, Michael. <laughs> Mike, no, Michael, drink, it's wine, Michael. Wine. <laughs> All right, back to the Rock'em Sock'em. So the Venom, <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em. It was made. Real Steel, which is not a, technically a Rock'em Sock'em movie, <laughs> but the plot of that movie is robot fighting that's controlled by people, which is Rock'em Sock'ems. Like okay. Well, they're making it again, so. And this time with Vin Diesel, with <laughs> singer Vin Diesel. Hugh What's, Jackman makes music, too. What are your guys' favorite Vin yeah, Diesel like movies? Broadway and stuff like I that, right? I don't think I have one. I mean, should we just What'd you say? Project? What's my favorite what? Hilarious. Vin Diesel. I'm I'm going What's my favorite Vin Diesel? Movies. Movies. Movie. Movie. Yeah, I'd be the only I'd, one I've seen. I honestly, no. I think Pacifier might be the only Vin Diesel movie I've ever seen. Yeah. You've seen Fast and Furious? No. I've never seen Fast and I have, no, I have no interest. I have movie. zero Fast interest in watching. Put it on the yeah. list, right? I would say this <laughs> if Nick was here, too. I have zero interest in watching Fast and Furious. It's, it's fake. I, it's all like, dude, I literally <laughs> I mean, watched, I I literally watched the trailer. No, I literally just watched the trailer for the new one, yeah. and the guy goes off a cliff, and the helicopter picks it up in midair. That's what's so funny. I mean, they're dumb. I understand. I think it's stupid. It's a stupid concept. I understand. Oh, the, right. I don't. <laughs> they're dumb movies. No like, way. It's really never fake. A car a <laughs> no, I, I can't say I have. I time time. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen. No. I think the only Vin Diesel movie I saw was when he did the uh, voice for Groot for Guardians. Okay, of the Galaxy. so technically, right, I will. Great really movie. Good. Yeah. Really good. I forgot. Yeah, I've never seen a single Vin Diesel movie. Pacifier, sick. You got to see Pacifier. Really? <laughs> the Pacifier, 2005. Dante, is it true they actually think that Duck weighs 50 pounds? The what? <laughs> the duck weighs 50 pounds. This is so blown out of I mean, we portion. have it on video. No, no I literally said if I had to pick a number, I didn't say that's what it was. I no, said hypothetically. Did. Did you run out no, you of talking did. points today? Right? <laughs> if you told me, if you asked me right now, I'd say 10 pounds, I'd say a duck weighs. They actually most. weigh like yeah, 5 pounds. pounds. Yeah, yeah, but you said I literally just threw out a number, 50. That wasn't oh, okay. my final thought. Are we out of material? Okay. <laughs> Can we see what the average Baby elephant. Baby elephant? Newborn. Oh, newborn. The average duck, I'm going to guess, weighs under 5 pounds. It's, it's it like 1.5 one, one to 2. I'd say 10 yeah, pounds at 1. most. 1.5 to, to 3.5. Yeah. Really? A mallard. Not well, I'm not a duck expert, so I don't no. know. Clearly not. A baby elephant, probably like... He went to school for That's journalism. probably 50 pounds, 60 pounds. <laughs> 250. <laughs> Two, what? 250. 250? Oh, my a God. Baby, baby elephant. I said 50, 60. Oh, no, way more. Those things are huge at a birth. Huge. I guess huge. I don't watch National Geographic enough. It's, just, it's the same class where they tell you how big a, a yard is. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Someone asked, what's a rhombus? Uh, uh, a, uh, a shape with four sides. Yes. We, yeah. we know someone what a said, is. and uh, I think someone said in the TikTok, it's like uh, it got hit by a bus. It's a uh, square I, got hit I, by I, a bus yeah, or something like that. that yeah, that's um, what it was. <laughs> it's like a diamond, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 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 Um, so we got a little MLB update, NBA update, and then that's all we got for today. All right, so I can go start with the MLB update. Yeah, go for it. So the Red Sox won yesterday, 11 to 4. It was a blowout. See that game? They started the game with six hits, consecutive hits. Started I watched really? Sox in two last night, the first inning. Dude, unbelievable. Yeah, they're great. They're a fun team they to watch. Yeah. They're well, really not bad. So I want to talk about those the White Sox. So I, I, I'm interested in your opinion about this, Gardner. Okay. So the White Sox in the seventh inning in a six run game. They were down 10 to 4. Yep. In the seventh inning, they decided to throw a position player. Yep. You're in Mercedes. And then the eighth inning, they throw a position player. Okay. What do you think about that? Is that good strategy? You know, you don't waste your bullpen guys? Or is that bad? Because, you know, you, it's a six run game. You well, can score I six runs in three innings. Okay. Two innings. I have a question for you. Yes. What game is this in the series? The fourth game. Makes sense. Did they play two taxed. yesterday? No. Their bullpen's so taxed right now. That's all that's saying. So they had Friday off, and then they did play doubleheader the day before. But this is more that you've seen this more. So, in 2021 already, we have already seen nine position players pitch already in the season. Yep. And in 2011, it was eight for the entire season. So we've seen an uptick in position players pitching. Yep. I think it's. I mean, I hate it. I mean, I personally am not a fan of it at all. Because like, if you're at the game, if if it's a blowout, if you're down 10 runs or something like that, and it's the ninth inning, yeah, I understand. You're not winning that game. You're not coming back. You might as well throw a position player, save your arms for another – save so your bullets for another game. So what's your solution? I mean – Do you think there should be a mercy rule? I think you should just limit the number of position players that can pitch. I think you should have to declare a player as a hitter or a pitcher before the game. And, I mean, unless you're Otani or something like that, then – I mean, I, I think it's just – it's a bad visual aspect for the sport. I mean, it's fun. It's quirky. 
but it's less fun and quirky when it happens daily, first of all. And second of all, you know, if I'm at a, the, a few years ago when Joe Madden was still managing the Cubs, he threw a position player in a five run game in the eighth inning. Mm-hmm. That's absolute bullshit. Because you can score five runs in an inning. It happens. It doesn't happen often, but it happens. You can do it. I've seen it happen many times. Name you're one. Just, you're so just, it's a 162 <laughs> game season. It's a 162 game season, but, you know, going back to the fan experience, though, if I'm going to a game, I want to see the best players play. I don't want to see you punt a game just because, oh, we have to rest up for the next game. I don't know. I, I think it's just – it's not okay. a thing It's so not a thing that they used to do, and now it's a thing that they're doing So again. responding to that, would you rather – if you're going to a game, would you rather see uh, the, ninth pitch, the ninth pitcher in the bullpen Kasey pitch? This yeah. one? Yeah, that one. Or would I you agree. rather see Xander Bogarts come in? Thank you. And no pitch in eight. I would rather have my – if Xander Bogarts gives up well, – it's, it's never Xander Bogarts. It's always the fifth bench player on the team. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, – What's up with that much? There's a, Nats, a, there's a Nats player named Tyler Moore that is a meme with me and my brother. So. Oh, do you think it's going to him? Maybe. Very possibly. Yeah. For a long time ago, Nats player. But uh, – Maybe it's him? It could very well yeah. be him. Um, but uh, – I don't know if I Bullshit. am. I don't know. I just don't see much of a problem with it. I, I know. I understand your reasoning behind yeah. it. I just, you know, it's a long season. I think it's, it's cool. It's the fourth game of the series. These guys just played a doubleheader yesterday. Like, lame scheduling. I mean, I don't know. I think seeing those highlights of like, uh, what? Like a down short stop, that like doing or a law or ball, just trying to something out. <laughs> They're pretty John. entertaining. <laughs> Doc you know has I mean? a burner account in the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess I do. There's a guy who just commented, am I the yeah. only one, or is Dante so fucking cool? <laughs> Best dressed and just the coolest. Lot Gamer 99 I appreciate the fuck out of you, buddy. I'm pretty sure this is Dante's who burner is account. I'm sure he's, like, tweeting underneath, uh, texting underneath the table with his phone. He's, like, commenting on us. Uh, yeah, I yeah. wish it was. I don't know. Thanks. Dante. I got fans. Thank you. Thank you. I got this a few weeks ago. Well, now I it's like your it. turn to talk. All right, my turn. NBA update. Can you actually pull up that thing because there were some Steph Curry things? All right, so this is really the bulk of the NBA update. Steph Curry is a fucking god. He is. Um, the last 10 games, he's averaging over 41 points, 55% from the field, 51% from three, 89% from the free throw line. I mean, it's not even – Arguably funny. having a better season. Well, not, but he is putting up very, very, very similar numbers to the year that he won the MVP unanimously. Um, and it's a damn shame that he's not going to be – a finalist for MVP because the Warriors aren't one of the best teams in the NBA. But if you determine value of a player, I think he's one of the more valuable players because if you take him off that team, they're trash. Um, he had 49 last night. He had 10 Come threes. On. He has 21 career games with 10 plus threes, and he has six of them this year. The next highest in NBA history is five with Clay Thompson. So he has more te- uh, games with 10 plus threes this year than anyone else does in history. It's really funny. You know, and with NBA reporters, a lot of them love to just dismiss how great Steph Curry is. It's ridiculous. He, it's he, so after I was watching the highlights of last night, I literally was thinking this. People just have to actually just watch and appreciate this because we're not going to see this again. No, like, I mean, we'll see, like, guys that, you know, Iguodala. similar. Um, I'm taking Iguodala. <laughs> I want Iguodala. <laughs> um, but, like, guys like LeBron and Steph, like, instead of trashing on them, like, this and that, like, just – Watch enjoy and appreciate. Just exactly. enjoy it because they're not going to be here forever. Especially LeBron. I mean, he only has a few years left. But yeah, like, I say that now. I say that now. But I mean, more less years than Curry. That's why I'm trying to put it out. But like, it's just what this guy does is um, against the Celtics the other night. Like, I'm literally watching this guy play, and I'm, he's shooting these shots, and I'm just like, wow, it would be crazy if that winner. Like, there's no way that goes in, and it goes in. You can't do anything. It's not like he's taking like open threes or anything. Like, heavily contested, leaning off balance, like any type of shot. He hits and like he's just he changed the game because you think you see all these p- new players coming in that just are shooting such threes from 30, 35 feet. No one was doing that before Steph Curry. If they were not often, Steph Curry literally just changed the game. Um, and you're gonna see. I was talking to my friend about this the other day. The next generation of talent, like all these new kids coming in, they're all gonna be like Curry because now, like the kids nowadays are literally. What are you talking about? I mean, the kids nowadays are the guys that are, are the rookies in the league now. Yeah, Lamelo Ball like <laughs> yeah. is a prime example of that. Like you're gonna see so many new players come in that literally are modeling their game after Curry. Like all these, like what happened? Trey Young. Yeah, Trey Young too. I mean, yeah, but I'm saying like the next like ten it. years, like kids that are growing up like 10, 11 years old right now that are literally practicing trying to mimic Steph are gonna come in in the NBA, and it's, that's all it's gonna be. 
but like I, I think about guys that have changed the NBA, like the Kobe's, the Jordans, the LeBrons, I and I think Kurt. If you think of the Mount Rushmore of like guys that have changed the game, I think Curry's on that. I think he's on there. Put him on there. I think he is. I genuinely think he is. I think it's hard to say that. I think he's uh, for sure changed the mm-hmm. game. I mean, he's changed the last ten years of NBA basketball just from the, sh- the shooting revolution that we've seen, the, ex- the perimeter shooting revolution mm-hmm. that we've seen. I will say, um, oh, I got ranked last by this guy on his ranking of favorite people on the panel. Oh, Put him on well, right I'm, I'm, right, I'm only right. Up, I'm only yeah. one above you, so I mean, I'm not, you're not one. last. I said anything. You're fourth. <laughs> I'm yeah, you're, fourth. You're ahead of me. Yeah, Let's go. I guess we you're suck. Ahead of me and Johnny. Well, and the QB one. Maybe they won't be taking any more questions. <laughs> uh, I'm a vengeful and spiteful god. I think. Um, um, but going back to what yeah. you say, mm-hmm. uh, I think that, you know, I mean, you had Kareem who changed the game sure. more than LeBron changed the game more. Uh, I mean, arguably, you know, KG, Ray Allen, Pierre Paul Pierce. I mean, they, well, they, they di- the in a different, in a different, that's know. a different, different topic, though. But, I mean, I'm talking about like games. players and how you play, not as a team and how players well, come changed, together. He changed the, the they changed the way that the game operates as much as I'm, okay sure but I'm thinking I'm, think I'm, I'm talking more I'm talking more individual no, oh yeah, I'm talking about I, individual I didn't say that was a bad thing never heard did I say it was a bad thing no I'm just saying more from an individual <laughs> perspective like one player <laughs> coming in thing. how they play chance I think yes. I think within the I next agree. five ten years people will start to notice that more because Bob like Kuzi I said and, uh, more Curry. players will be coming in styling um, playing like Curry and that's when we'll see okay he really did change the game Mm-hmm. So maybe not now, but I think down the line, people will definitely be talking about that. I mean, Wilt changed the game. Wilt changed – yeah, I mean, listen, more than four guys changed the game. Yes. I just think the way Steph – I mean, like I said, no one shoots like Steph. No one shot like him before. I think, personally, not any time in the foreseeable future, but like 10, 15 years down the line, I think the NBA is going to implement – they're going to change the three-point line, either take it – like bring it back more – implement a four not a line per se but a four point type of um yeah kind of but maybe a little different i I think they're gonna have to change the game because of how much people are shooting nowadays Mm. like steph curry's literally pulling up between the three-point line half court and draining it like i mean trey young too damian lillard they're gonna have to do something to to combat that not anytime soon but um but yeah so those are the exception not the the majority those guys i don't think we'll see ever you know, Lamelo is one of them now too. Yeah. But I'm saying more. The more people I mean, come in, the more we're going to see that. That's where I'm coming from there. I still think it'll be the, the exception of, of those kinds of shooters, because not everyone can shoot that way. I mean, not everyone can shoot that way. It's true. It takes a little. The way the NBA is transcending though, and the way it's going, it's looking like it's going to be like that. Though shooting has taken over the game, but we'll see. It's that's we'll see what happens in the future. But yeah, Seth Curry ain't going to win the MVP, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Nikola Jokic probably is. I mean, he almost had a four, he only had he almost had a fifty point triple double last night. Yeah. So I mean like, like Steph Curry's doing his disgusting. thing, but Jokic is like yeah. he's also just on another level. So yeah, it's crazy. It's gonna the MVP race this year is gonna be nuts because there's like four or five guys you can make a legit argument to win it. Yeah, and it's and like Jokic, and I know he's been out a little bit, but Embiid still has an argument. Lillard, Harden, and and you can throw Steph in there. Be honest. Giannis. You could. You can he's make an gonna. argument. He shouldn't. He I mean, shouldn't win it, but you can make an argument. LeBron, I mean, I know he's missed oh. time, but, like, I don't know. It's going to be it's gonna be very interesting uh, to see who wins it because I feel like no matter who wins it, people are going to be pissed off. Like, if James Harden wins it, the Jokic fans can be like, he should have won it. If Jokic wins it, the Embiid people are going to be like, Embiid should have won it. And all and it's going to keep going and going and going. So I'm excited to see what happens. This NB the QB one is just shitting on me. What? He said, he, so he said the four through six is interchangeable, but I put me last because their their drip is better. We got better drip. Sorry, Johnny. I'm gonna show up. First of all, <laughs> you try waking up at 5:30 in the morning and trying to dress nicely. <laughs> it's hard. Okay, I'm tired. I don't feel like putting on real clothes. Tell him, Johnny. Second of all, yeah, you're probably right. I don't dress that well. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I got no swag. No. All right, Dante, you got yeah. anything else for us? Lamelo. Lamelo, yeah, coming back seven to ten days, hopefully. Um, nice. In my opinion, even if he missed the rest of the season, I'd still pick him to win Rookie of the Year because he he just is. Um, but hopefully, when he comes back, he just goes off for the last I don't know ten or so games and just reminds people that that award's mine, and I think mm-hmm. he will. So cool. it's good for basketball. Yep. It's good for basketball. Right, I'll take a couple of your questions today. 
okay, envy the QB1. You go to school every day. You do it every day. You dress so nice. Fine. Okay, you win. Uh, ignore him. Me. Ignore him. Stop ignore him. Me. Right. This guy has been bullied. No, this guy in the comments is saying that I dress like shit. Right? <laughs> John, he's getting bullied by like a 15-year-old. Yeah, I'm getting bullied by a 15-year-old. <laughs> don't pay attention to those kids. <laughs> it's a light bully. I enjoy it. Any it's a light bully. Want, it's, it's a fine. light bully. I have thick skin. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. These kids don't understand. All right, we got These some questions. Kids. Should the uh, – I'm going to – so someone asked what's going on with the Yanks, but I'm going to reframe it. Should the Yankees fire Aaron Boone after their slow start of the season? Wow. No, no. There's so much time left. Yes. They'll go on a fucking 10 game win streak and they'll I hate be. how it's always, oh, you know, this team's sucking right now. Let's just fire the manager. No. Nah. Like, I mean, I think Boone's a bad manager. I don't think Boone's ever been a good manager. I don't know enough about him to know if he's he, a good manager or not. I, I, I think he needs to. He need, he's not a manager. They hired a former player who never managed a day in his life, right. who was a media personality, who never coached a day in his life, to be their manager. The way he got it, the manager job, was by constructing the lineup the way that Brian Cashman wanted him to construct the lineup. In their interview, they pulled everyone aside and said, how would you construct our lineup? And Aaron Boone did it correctly, and so he got the job. It's, it, he's not really the manager, because they don't have a manager. It's Brian Cashman's puppet. puppet. And Boone's just not. I would say I, I respect Aaron Boone, that time he stood up against the umpire for his players. Oh, yeah. These guys um, are savages in the box. Savages in the box, yeah. I respect uh, the hell out of that. So. Yeah. No, I, I don't have a problem with Aaron Boone as a person. I just think he's a shit manager. I just don't think it's time. I think I think they needed to fire him after last season. I mean, listen, when you're the Yankees, you have high expectations. Your expectations is you shouldn't ever, ever be in last place. Mm -hmm. And they are. We talked about this yesterday. I think Boone needs to go. They haven't won anything with Boone. They haven't even made it to a World Series with Boone. How long has he been there? This is his fourth season. It's a short leash for, the, for Yankee managers. I, I think they never should have fired Girardi, but that's just me. Right. I think Girardi's a very good manager. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Should the NFL expand, and if so, where? No, it's still a very good How many teams are in the NFL? No, 30? 32. Oh, no. Why would they expand? 32 teams is plenty. All set. You don't need more than 32 teams. No. Yeah, I'm not. You don't need to expand yet. No. Maybe in a few years. Nah, not right now. No. no. That shouldn't be on their list of priorities. I mean, should they relocate it? To relocate you? and expand are you know, two different things. I, I mean, the depending London on. Jaguars. <laughs> London Jaguars. Let's get a team out in Hawaii. Be Hawaii. I want Vermont to have a team. I would love college football. I would love watching Hawaii games because they weren't at like eleven o'clock at night, and it was just something to have on. Yeah. Could you imagine me on the island, bro? Yeah. Uh, always bet the over for points if they're on the island. Just a fun <laughs> fact. Wow. They're literally like all ten and one and overs when really? they play in Hawaii. Yeah, dude. They like whenever they play at home, <laughs> they're disgusting. <laughs> yeah. And right, I'll do one more question. We'll wrap it up after this. Do you, who do you think is more deserving of making the Hall of Fame? Julian Edelman or Devin Hester? Edelman. Wow. No. Edelman. Devin Hester is possibly the best kick returner of all time. If you are the best at something, at a position, you should definitely be. What if his accolades? His accolades? He's one of the best. I'm just curious. I'm, just, I'm curious I what mean, his accolades are. Let's see. Because I don't. He, he was lightning. He was. Pro Bowl. Four-time Pro Bowl, three-time first-team All-Pro, one-time second-team All-Pro. Uh, he was Hester. on the 2000s All-Decade Team, 2010s All-Decade Team. Hester. NFL 100th Anniversary All-Time Team. I mean, NFL records, 20 total career touchdowns, uh, return touchdowns, most all-time. 14 punt return touchdowns, most all-time. Six return touchdowns in a season, tied for most all-time. All right, I changed my answer. I'm Hester. going Devin Hester. Devin Hester, a four shirt Yeah, I'm going offense. Devin Hester. I mean, he's the best kick returner of all time. Yeah, yeah, I'll give him that. All right, yeah, I'll change my answer I mean, to Devin if Hester. If you're the best at your position of all time, then you should be a Hall of Famer. That player. is ridiculous. Like, I think fucking, like, um, uh, maybe even um, Slater. Um, Ma what's name? Matthew Slater. Matthew Slater. I mean, he's one of the best you know, special team yeah. players of all time. Yeah, definitely. He should possibly be a Hall of Famer. I yeah, you can make the art. Yeah, definitely yeah. you could. I think if you are the best at your position, you should be a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Fair. Fair. I, I don't know. I'm, I was just thinking two different ways because they're obviously two different types of players, yeah. Edelman and Hester. But, no, Hester definitely would get over him. Yeah. What do you guys think? Hester? I'm going Hester all the way. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. That's it. We have some more questions, but we'll wrap it so up. That's all we got. All right. Well, you want to hit us with the outro? All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in.
put on those notifications. We got more videos coming out this week. We're doing office games today, is that right? Oh, yeah. So that'll be dropping in the next couple days. What? Uh, let us know what you want to see in the comments, and we'll see you tomorrow. Boom. Later.